faithful subscribers. I want to show people really how to make a quick web app. And here's one I've put together, uh, which basically does an SQL query. So you can put an SQL query in here, like something simple, like say show database. And it will send that down to a MySQL database and come back with a query. So it didn't like that one because I forgot the S. So it'll make a table and show you what databases are in there. So how do we make this work? Well, I've used Bootstrap Studio and this is basically an endpoint. So I'm using Flask to host this. And here's Flask running, which you can see if I move this out of the way. You'll see right now Flask is running and it basically has uh, has some debugging information here from when I was working on it last night. It'll show you um, what the page was that it did to hit this thing and it, it works quite well. So to make that work, basically I wrote some Python here and I've converted to Python 3 recently. And so you want to use a connector here. In my case, it's called PYMySQL Connect. And you can import that here. You also can import Flask. And so here I'm connecting to the DB. It's on my server on the Mac OS actually here. And I'm using something called user1 and user1 password. Database is called historical. So with that, I can connect to the database and execute a uh, SQL query. The rest of this stuff is really just um, building a string and building a table and then outputting a table. So the hardest part about this really was getting this thing to talk to the web page back. And to do that, I had to use uh, JSON. That's the only way I could make it work. So when this is clicked, submit, I will call this do SQL query field here. And that's right here. And if you come down here, finally, there's a return and return JSONify and then the field, the key, I call it data. And then I put in the whole SQL result. So that'll just return one piece of JSON with something called data and SQL results. Now, how do we intercept that back in the web page? Well, so I've been using uh, this tool here, which is um, basically a, a, a bootstrap studio type tool. And for that, I created, first of all, this menu here, which I basically drag things from this selector up here. I can drag text boxes in, I can drag buttons in, and I place them here. So I'm placing them using, using rows and columns, and then putting in headers, putting in buttons. So that's all pretty easy. The hard part here is how do you make the stuff actually interact with your Flask app on the back end? That's a little trickier. So you want to name things like this button here. You just give it a name like submit SQL query. And the results down here are put into a div. So you can find a div here and it's called SQL output, which is all well and good. So now you want, I'm using jQuery, which I like. It's easy and it seems universal. And it's just been around forever. So I wrote this little tiny jQuery JavaScript type file that you can open up here. And when you open that file up, you'll see that it's pretty simple. But it took me a while to figure this out because it's not really well. Everything in this world of JavaScript is, is really, really, for me, not documented well difficult. So what I found through six months of working this stuff is that you always want to have some document ready. And when your web page is ready to do something, it'll call the rest of this. So then if this button is clicked, so if this button up here is clicked, I will call this thing here, submit SQL query. So, so I will basically, if this button is clicked, it's named submit SQL query, which is right here. If that's clicked, it'll fire off the rest of this. And 
I put in this event prevent default here, which basically says, um, it tells this thing, we're doing a post, don't bother doing a get, is what I understand how it works. But again, not much of this is documented right. So down here, the SQL output, I'll put like a working banner in here. So when this is pressed, then you'll see this thing will say working and it'll say working in, until it finishes the request, which is an Ajax below here. So basically then I will um, get this variable called query, which it will grab the actual uh, text from SQL query text SQL query text is this um, box up here. It's simply a text area. So it'll copy all the stuff typed into that text area into the single query. Now we do the Ajax post. And I'll call this do SQL query, which is in this program here. It's part of our Flask app. And that's that right there. It'll call this endpoint. And the first thing it does is it'll say, did I get JSON? Yes, I did. So it'll fire off. It'll then do a JSON decode, um, get the query string. It'll do a split on that. Anyway, that's all basic parsing. But the trick is you want to do a, a method post. And then you want to do a um, check for JSON. And if it is JSON, you can request the data right here. And since I sent it in JSON, it's JSON, then you want to decode it. Then you'll get your data down. You can operate it on it however you want. And you can return it. I return it back in JSON. So I'll JSONify any results I have back in JSON and have it called data. All right. This took me like a while to get this working, like probably two days, which is unfortunate. But I hadn't done this stuff in like six months, so it took it some time. Anyway. Once you post this thing, you're going to post it. And this is all I found that, that would work. And I really did this about six months ago. and had this code tucked away somewhere. But since this is not well understood or documented by many people, and it's always on the web scattered in different ways, I want to show you something that actually works. So that's this. And so you put this stuff into JSON, UTF-8, data type JSON. Now, you send it off, and this AJAX, this jQuery AJAX, We'll send this thing off to um, that URL on your Flask server. And if it succeeds, which hopefully it will, it'll call the success. And so here, this function response is just trying to get the response back from the um, return. And so that response will be returned by um, the return we talked about. So again, back here to the do query thing, it'll return in this return right here. So that's what we're getting is this data back right there. So once that data fires back, you'll see this success here will fire. And we want to put that in SQL output. So this SQL output is basically a div. So it kind of sprays it in down through here. And in here, I have SQL output as a div right there. And it just puts it all right below that div. As you can see, the div is highlighting above. It'll put all, all the stuff below in a table. So that's how that works. And once you get the response, it's response.data. And it's called .data because we're returning it as .data. So here we'll see, again, it's called data here. If I called this thing cat, dog, or squirrel, you would want to name it basically something like um, Instead of data there, you would say cat, dog, or squirrel here. But since I use the word data, you gotta um, use the word data here when you when you get it back in success. So this could be response dot anything here, whatever you named it in your return on on the first part of your JSON, which is your JSON key basically. And if I got an error here, this would fire off. But since I'm really not using this correctly, I'm I'm, I'm basically returning everything as a status 200 success. Even if it's an error, I return the success and I parse it. So maybe that's not the best thing to do, but it works. So hopefully this is helpful to you to how to use, say, Bootstrap Studio. 
how to use divs, how to use text input boxes. So this text area input box is, is handy. And with um, Bootstrap Studio, you can do a preview. And as you're editing and fixing things, the preview actually will work. So um, I don't want to disable it. Let's see, preview is on. So I think now if I say preview, I don't use this enough. Preferred URL. Should work. Anyway, it has a preview feature and it's useful. Okay, well, thanks for watching. Hopefully this uh, tells you a little more about how to do a post to Flask and get a response back. Thanks for watching. Have a great day.